Hola, soy José, soy asistente de campo y estamos en, en la investigación de las tortugas gigantes. Mi nombre es Freddy Cabrera, trabajo en el programa de ecología y movimiento de tortugas gigantes de Galápagos y queremos agradecer a, a todos los, los donantes por apoyar a este gran proyecto que es la ecología y movimiento de tortugas. Hello, my name is Ainoa Nieto. We are in the highlands of Santa Cruz. This is one of the places where we work within the Galapagos Giant Movement Ecology Program. I've been working on this project since 2016, studying other um, threats that the uh, tortoises are facing here in the archipelago, like invasive species, like the um, fragmentation of the habitats, infectious diseases, among other. Um, and we are also studying the migration of the giant tortoises. And all this information is very important because we provide um, advice to the Galapagos National Park and other uh, stakeholders for the conservation of these uh, giant tortoises here in Galapagos. We want to um, we want to say thank you to the Galapagos Conservation Trust and all the donors and people that are supporting us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. There's a very important reason why I'm making this little video of myself in a funny little academic office in the St. Louis University where I work. And that's because my name is Stephen Blake and I'm the coordinator of the Galapagos Tortoise Movement Ecology Program. And I want to extend a very, very big thank you to all of those who donated so generously to a recent appeal by the Galapagos Conservation Trust to look for funding for the Galapagos Tortoise Movement Ecology Programme. When I'm not sitting here in St. Louis being a professor, I coordinate the programme based on the Galapagos Islands, where I lived for a few years in between 2007 and 2010, and we're actually celebrating our 10th year of operations of the Movement Ecology Programme. So when I'm sitting here in St. Louis and I'm feeling melancholy, I'll spend uh, some of the hard-earned time that I get him paid for to be a biology professor, looking through old pictures of my colleagues and myself on beautiful parts of the Galapagos Islands like this. This picture was taken in 2010, and it shows us fitting GPS tags onto giant tortoises on the volcano rim of Alcedo volcano. Pictures like that bring back unbelievable happy memories of being in some of the most amazing places on earth, being privileged enough to work with such iconic and important species as giant tortoises. And the whole reason we're able to do our research and hopefully to um, promote and support conservation of tortoises is through donations such, of your, such as yours. So I get terribly melancholy when I'm looking at old pictures like this and wishing I was back on the Galapagos Islands. So when that strikes and I'm procrastinating about writing lectures, you'll be pleased to know I actually do some work on giant tortoises while I'm here. And one of the programs that Galapagos Conservation Trust have so generously funded is this one of studying the reproductive ecology of giant tortoises and trying to find out what happens during the lost years of giant tortoise life, when a little tiny hatchling like this one, weighs about 60 grams, begins life on leaving the nest. So thanks to your support, among the many things we do is study the survival of both eggs and hatchling tortoises in different nesting zones on Santa Cruz Island. Here we've got three nesting zones, lower zone, middle zone, and the upper zone, and they're sort of defined by all of these dots which represent relocations of radio-tagged hatchlings that were hatched in each of these three zones. And the black dots represent the migration pathways of adult females who spend part of the year way up here in the highlands and the other part of the year in the lowlands nesting and laying eggs. So we study tortoise nesting, we look at the number of eggs and the size of eggs in a clutch, we weigh the eggs, measure them, put them back in the nest, and then look at things like, in this case, survival of eggs with elevation. 
and here we can see that egg mortality is really low when nests are very close to the coast at low elevations. But when tortoises lay eggs up in higher elevations, the egg mortality increases to close to 100% at the upper limit of those zones. So we're trying to understand well, why would tortoises lay eggs up here in the first place and um, what are the consequences of tortoises laying eggs there on survival of the population and the growth of the population over time. So we monitor hatchlings when they're born and we weigh them, measure them, put VHF tags on them and then follow them around for the next few years and come up with things like these growth rate curves. If we look over a few years since hatchling, days since hatchling, hatching sorry, on this x-axis and the weight of tortoises as they grow, we find that the poor old hatchlings grown in the upper nesting zone hardly grow at all compared to the ones in the other two nesting zones. Conversely, because they don't grow, they tend not to survive. And so the hatchlings in that upper nesting zone have very high mortality rates, as do the eggs, whereas the tortoises in the upper nesting zone and the middle nesting zone do much better as hatchlings. When I'm not doing things like making presentations, we're also working on um, publications. And based on those data that you just saw, we've just submitted a, a publication to a very prestigious journal called Ecological Monographs, entitled Environmental Variation Structures Reproduction and Recruitment in Long-Lived Mega Herbivores, Galapagos Giant Tortoises. So with fancy publications like these, pretty pictures and good data, we hope to be able to influence how conservation is done on Galapagos for the long-term benefit and well-being of giant tortoises and their environments. We can only do this work through donations such as yours. We have three permanent staff members on the Galapagos and a half-time education specialist. We have me sitting here in St. Louis. We have equipment to buy, we have plane tickets to purchase and things in order to make our project run. We can only do it thanks to you, and I simply can't thank you enough for all your support and to the support of the Galapagos Conservation Trust over the last decade. And I assure you that we'll do everything we can to spend every penny you gave us as wisely, as sensibly, and as productively as possible. Thank you very much.